ago. They're really great storytellers. Thank you guys so much, people who have performed me. And I've had the privilege of hearing most of these stories, and they've been pretty incredible. So it's a great group of people to be up here with. We love you, Ingrid. <laughs> okay. So anyone who knows me knows that um, I have ultimate fear of being a chump. I mean, I'm like one of those paranoid people that orders decaf at Starbucks, and then I have to like peer over the counter to make sure that they don't like pour in the real shit because they're out. And God forbid that you ask for a little cream, non-fat, and then you gotta make sure, because you know they got those stickers on the side, and sometimes they put in the regular when you ask for them. I have to like sit and watch, and, and if I get in a taxi, I have to like sit right up and give them directions. Like, no, you want to take right here, because I don't want them to get an extra buck for me, you know? <laughs> I mean, I have an ultimate fear of, of being made a fool of. So you think with this that I would probably not volunteer to go on a um, reality TV show. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I did. <laughs> it was the spring of 2004, and um, they offered me, like, uh, they, these producers called me through a friend, and they told me absolutely nothing about the show except for that they would give me $10,000 if I did it. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, but having an ultimate fear of being made a fool out of. Um, I, I like googled the contract, I looked up all these names, I mean I was like, I, I cannot be, I showed up and on the airplane on the way over there was this article in Variety magazine about that show Average Joe, and you know like, I don't know if you, any of you guys have heard about it, it's like all these really nerdy guys competing for this like really hot model chick, and all the people that were on that show thought they were on a show called Finding Love, and then they find out they were on Average Joe and then they were being made fools of, so I was like terrified that I was going to show up and I was going to be on average Jane. So I get there, and I'm like watching all the people get out of the car, and I'm like looking around, and they're like, huh, like, people are kind of average, you know? I'm like assessing everyone. She's <laughs> not that hot. I mean, he's not that cute. So they explain to us, like they wait till we're all like lined up, and then they explain to us that there's going to be like seven guys and seven girls living in this house, competing for the affections of this like really hot model bachelor and really hot bachelorette. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm on co-ed average Jane. <laughs> and then this kind of girl gets out of her car and she's like on these like loose side heels. She's like 36 triple E for us. I mean, they were ginormous. Bigger than mine. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not on average Jane. I mean, this girl is really hot. She has one of those like cans that you pay for. And like really long down extensions and... I was like, well, maybe, maybe not average chain, but I wasn't ready to put my conspiracy theories hat off quite yet. So I was watching everything really carefully. Like on the very first day, um, I look at the girl standing next to me. I'm like, so how'd you, how'd you come to find this? I mean, like, how did you get into this? She's like, oh, my agent called like two days ago and set it up for me. I'm like, I, for three months I've been taking psych exams and blood tests and like interviewing with panels of people. Two days ago. So my head's like running. I'm like a complete paranoid person. And then, and then this like rich guy, Ernie, who's supposedly the heir to this like um, wine fortune, apparently he decided to like gift the bachelorette by buying everybody there like a sponsorship for a South American orphan. And I'm like, how do you know how many people are going to be here? I mean, I didn't even know what the premise of the show was. How do you know how many people? So people kind of like had an intervention with me and they were like, Ingrid, you're really paranoid. You're ruining the whole thing for us. Could you just like <laughs> dial it down a little bit? Um, I'm like, all right, fine. I was really afraid that the show was going to make me out to look like neurotic anyway, so I, I <laughs> dialed it down. But then, little Miss Loose Side Heels, she brings me into the bathroom and tells me that she was in a softcore porn video um, called Porked and Beans, where she lays in the um, and they pour canned baked beans over her.
and we'll pay you $100,000 if you can fool the next person we bring in. And I was like, after I like passed out from being shocked, okay, I can make a fool out of someone else for $100,000. situation of being trying to be made into a major chunk into being a major chunk. <laughs>